I learned more about how to write from reading this book than I did in four years of film school. And I think it's a book that every filmmaker should read. It's by George Saunders, who, in my humble opinion, is one of the greatest living American writers. His other books include 10th of December, In Persuasion Nation, and Lincoln in the Bardo. He's a writer, mostly of short stories, but I think that his wisdom and craft of storytelling is so informative and inspirational that its lessons can be applied to any art form, filmmaking included. So for the past 20 years, Saunders has taught a class at Syracuse about 19th century Russian short stories. About 700 students apply to take the class every year, and only six are accepted. Luckily for all of us non-Syracuse students, he created a condensed version of the class in book form, which is this, a swim in a pond in the rain. I wanted to boil down my big four takeaways and what I think every filmmaker can learn from reading it. So the book is talking about short stories, obviously, but I think that the principles he discusses apply to every kind of storytelling. The first being directness and economy. He says, if you know where a story is going, don't hoard it. Make the story go there now. Basically, don't dilly-dally. If you know that the meat of your story takes place as soon as the couple gets to Rhode Island, then why are we spending five scenes of them in New York? Let's get going already. This is something that I have to remind myself whenever I'm doing a second or a third pass on a script. Because usually speaking, the more cutting that you can do, the better. I like to look at my script and imagine what would happen if I just deleted the first scene. What about the second scene? What about the first three pages? What would we lose if we did that? More importantly, what do we gain if we did that? Does the story still work? Does doing this make it more interesting? These kind of drastic thought exercises can often reveal really exciting possibilities for a script. Saunders says, The story form is ruthlessly efficient. Everything in a story should be to purpose. Our working assumption is that nothing exists in a story by chance, or merely to serve some documentary function. Every element should be a little poem, freighted with subtle meaning that is in connection with the story's purpose. You need to go through your script piece by piece, line by line. Everything in your movie should be there for a reason. Every scene, every shot, every side plot. If it's not adding something to the story, then it's wasting the audience's time. Do you need that 10 second shot of your character walking to the office? Can we just cut right to them at their desk? Like he said, ruthless efficiency should be the guiding principle when you're making a movie. And this is a lot easier said than done. We would all be geniuses if we could naturally write with absolute efficiency. But I think it's something worth striving for every time you sit down to write. He quotes movie producer Stuart Kornfeld, who said that in every good screenplay, every structural unit has to do two things. Be entertaining in its own right, and advance the story in a non-trivial way. Sometimes you need servicey exposition to move the story along or to convey some piece of information, but it also must be entertaining. I recently watched Tenet for the first time, and there is so much exposition in that movie. That's essentially what most of the film is. But Christopher Nolan, god damn him, is so good at making exposition utterly captivating and entertaining. Usually. I always think about that scene in Oppenheimer where Alden Ehrenreich is just acting as a narrative foil, being like, but how could they do that? But how could Borden get access to Oppenheimer's FBI file? Could it have been Nichols? He's just asking all these questions so that narrative info can be doled out. And he's an amazing actor, but this is not good storytelling. The next lesson Saunders imparts is about escalation. Always be escalating. That's all a story is, really. A continual system of escalation. A swath of prose earns its place in the story to the extent that it contributes to our sense that the story is still escalating. If a story is this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, you probably have a pretty boring story. I made a video about the tool that I use to outline movies, which you can watch by clicking here. And you can clearly see on the paper the constantly rising stakes of the plot. Your plot needs to be doing this, always. Otherwise, you're boring your audience. I remember that I made a short film in college, which was essentially two guys driving around in a car talking, which original, I know. Somebody gave me a piece of feedback that I will never forget and that I still think about every time I write a movie. They said something to the effect of, raise the stakes a little bit, have a seagull fly into the car. That's honestly such good advice. 
Can you think of a better, more unexpected wrench in a story than a seagull flying into a car? It's perfect. I now think about that whenever I'm writing. What can I do to ratchet up the stakes of the scene? What's the seagull that I can have fly into the car? Saunders talks about our job as writers by giving an analogy of a Hot Wheels racetrack. Throughout the track are little gas stations called boosters that fling your car out and keep it progressing along the track. He says that one of our main jobs as a writer is to place gas stations around the track of our work so that the reader, or viewer, will keep watching and make it to the end of the movie. The next lesson that he talks about is causality. He says, I've worked with so many wildly talented young writers over the years that I feel qualified to say that there are two things that separate writers who go on to publish and those who don't. First, a willingness to revise. Second, the extent to which the writer has learned to make causality. Making causality doesn't seem sexy or particularly literary. It's a workmanlike thing, to make A cause B, the stuff of vaudeville or Hollywood. But it's the hardest thing to learn. It doesn't come naturally, not for most of us. But that's really all a story is, a series of things that happen in sequence, in which we can discern a pattern of causality. I remember seeing a video of Trey Parker and Matt Stone talking about how bad writing is, this thing happens, and then this thing happens. But good writing is, this thing happens, which causes that thing to happen. Or as Saunders says in the book, the queen died and then the king died is a boring story. But the queen died and then the king died of grief, that's a good story. Embrace your voice. If you've never read George Saunders' work, a, I would definitely recommend it, but B, I would say that he has one of the most distinctive, unique voices in literature. His stories are all extremely varied, but there's a really distinct, humorous, dystopic, formalist, yet playful sensibility throughout. So it was really interesting for me to hear him talk about struggling to find his authentic voice in his writing. He apparently started out writing pared down, sparse, Hemingway-esque prose, and kind of haphazardly backed into the style that he's now known for. He says that we all need to work to find this voice and then embrace it. Find the thing that's unique about your perspective and experience and sensibility, and then work from that place, as opposed to trying to be something that you're not. I think we've all seen movies that are striving to be something that's not authentic, and it sucks. It's not fun watching somebody doing their version of Tarantino, or their version of Sofia Coppola, or whatever. He talks about finding your style, finding your unique voice, injecting it into your work, and then trusting it. That's how characters get made. We export fragments of ourselves, then give those fragments pants and a hairstyle and a hometown and all that. Embracing your voice happens by personalizing your work. Writers also embrace their voice by trusting it throughout the duration of the process. Saunders narrows down the job of a writer to just one thing. The moment when, reading a line of our work, we decide whether to change it. We can reduce all of writing to this. We read a line, have a reaction to it, trust, accept, that reaction, and do something in response, instantaneously, by intuition. That's it. Over and over. It's kind of crazy, but in my experience, that's the whole game. 1. Becoming convinced that there's a voice inside you that really, really knows what it likes. And 2. Getting better at hearing that voice and acting on its behalf. This deceptively might be one of the most difficult things for any artist to do. Because what you're doing is putting your real, authentic self on the line in front of everybody and opening yourself up for judgment. Not everybody is going to like it, but some probably will. And this is the only option if you want to create interesting, worthwhile work. Anything else is just hack work. If you're not imbuing your movies with your voice and your experience, then you're just taking pictures. I want to round this video out with a final quote by Saunders. The closest thing to a method I have to offer is this. Go forth and do what you please. It really is true. Doing what you please, i.e. what pleases you, with energy will lead you to everything. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.